Hey, paper callers, let's talk about business development. Now, the first thing you need to do when you're gonna do business development in the paper call industry is create a brand for yourself. Now, I don't care if you're just gonna be an affiliate or you wanna build your own paper call network or you wanna broker calls. Whatever you're gonna do, you need to create a brand for yourself, AKA a business. Now, this is 10 times more important if you're not located in the United States or Canada because you're gonna be scrutinized as a foreigner in this space because the vast majority of fraud and paper call comes from non-Americans. And so if you're not an American, you're already at a disadvantage. And that's why it's really important that you take the time to take yourself seriously and create a brand. Now, this is not a complicated process. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It just takes a bit of work. And if you wanna see how other companies in the space do it, feel free to check out Ringba's Facebook page and LinkedIn profile and all our staff's profiles and LinkedIn pages and all that good stuff. Because it's really important that you take the time to express to the people you wanna do business with that you at least take yourself seriously. And doing that is really, really important. Otherwise, you're not gonna gain access to the networks, you're not gonna get replies from people, they're not gonna take you seriously, and you're not gonna be able to create a business for yourself. And so, to get started, all you really need is a few different things. Now, first you need a domain, okay? It's not okay to do business with a Hotmail address, a Yahoo mail address, or even a Gmail address, it's just, not acceptable. The bare minimum acceptable level of seriousness you want is your own domain name. So go buy one of those. We use Namecheap, it's great. It's like 10 bucks, you get a domain name. Now next, you need email for that domain, okay? And so the best way to do that is to just set up a G Suite account. It's $5 a month and it can handle all of your email for you. Uh, use your custom domain name. And if you don't want to use G Suite, you can use something else, but that's what we use at Ringba. We like it because it's really easy. We also get access to Drive and all the other features that come along with Google Apps. Next, you need a logo, okay? It's easy to get a logo. You go on Fiverr, you go somewhere else, you spend five to $15, and you have someone make you a logo that matches your domain name. Then, at least you have the, the beginnings of a brand and when you send someone an email, they're gonna take you a lot more seriously because at least you took the time to create a brand and that's like the bare minimum qualifier and paper call to see if someone is taking themselves seriously. Next, you need a website. Now this doesn't need to be a full website. If you use a template, that's also fine, but please do not put up a website that has lorem ipsum on it that you have not customized with broken URLs and broken links and missing information, that's not gonna fly either, okay? And so I see a lot of affiliates and I see a lot of people getting into this space. They throw up a template on their, their domain for their website, don't take the time to fill out all the information. And honestly, Americans look at that and they go, wow, that's shady. I'm not gonna do business with that guy. So at bare minimum, do a, a splash page that has your logo on it and maybe a little bit of information about you. If you have uh, contact information, you can put it on there, your address, all that good stuff, but put up some semblance of a completed website. Even if it is bare bones and super basic, let's make sure it's complete. Then you need to make a LinkedIn profile for your company. This is free, it takes about five minutes. You upload your logo to it. You put this company as your company on your personal LinkedIn profile page. So it has at least one employee on it and you put some information in there. You take the time to write a description. Maybe you do your website as a WordPress blog and you put up a couple blog posts about paper call and then post those on your LinkedIn profile. Just do something, just fill it out so that your company has a presence so that if people want to contact you or if they look at your company they can find it and see that there's actually real people behind that company and on your personal linkedin profile you need to use your real name okay i don't care if you're foreign use your real name don't write john smith and use some stock photo that's gonna throw red flags you're gonna have issues 
Just be yourself and you're gonna have a much better time of being taken seriously. Now, also I highly recommend cleaning up your Facebook profile and that's your first personal Facebook profile and your business Facebook page. Now you're gonna create a business Facebook page very similar to your LinkedIn business profile. Put all the same information on that, get some friends and family to like it. Make sure you have a cover photo, uh, your logo up there. And on your personal Facebook page, you want actual pictures of yourself. You wanna make sure that there's nothing politically motivated on there, that there's nothing religiously motivated on there. You just want a nice, clean, public Facebook profile that says, hey look, this is a real human. He interacts with other real humans. He seems like a nice guy or she seems like a nice girl. You just wanna make a very friendly Facebook profile page. Now if you use a fake, fake uh, name on that Facebook profile, when people do diligence into your business and you, they're not gonna work with you, okay? They're gonna know you're foreign if you're foreign by how you communicate, so there's absolutely no need to pretend that you're not foreign, just take yourself seriously and be professional. People will see that and they're gonna be okay with working with, with you in most circumstances. Now, if you're starting from zero and you wanna get into this space, I highly recommend that you create a Skype account when you create that Skype account, please do something very simple like adamyoung.callexperts or whatever your brand is. Please do not use some sort of juvenile handle like mafiaguy227, okay? That's not going to go over well in the community. People are going to notice it. They're going to not take you seriously. And when it comes to your profile picture, either use your brand logo or use an actual picture of yourself so that people know it's you and you can start to build a reputation for yourself because that's key. What we want to do here is set up a brand with a logo so that you can build a real business and create a reputation for yourself. And then over time, as you work with people, that reputation is going to be very valuable to you. Now, if you're gonna use a professional picture, okay, or a picture of yourself, it needs to be professional, all right? No pictures of you drinking or out partying or any of that nonsense. You just need a professional picture of yourself. That doesn't mean you need to be in a suit. That doesn't mean it can't be fun. It can be you smiling with a dog. As long as that picture is professional and looks good, and people can identify you, it makes them a lot more comfortable doing business with you. Now, real quick, when you send your emails, you need to make those emails look and feel professional, like a company would in the United States. And so if you look at this example here, if I were call experts, this is the bare minimum that I would do in an email as my signature. I would put my name in there, call experts, my office phone number, and my Skype name, and then I would put a disclaimer at the bottom of confidentiality so it seems corporate, because corporate people in the United States do this, it just seems normal. Now, if you don't have an American phone number, register for Ringba, generate one, and forward it wherever you wanna go, but you should have a North American phone number that people can actually call that goes to, at minimum, a voicemail. And you can set up that voicemail in Ringba. It's super easy to do. And then you have what looks like a professional presence so that when you start to communicate with people in the space, they're gonna Google your company name, they're gonna look at your website, they're gonna see you have social media profiles, they're gonna see that you've taken the time to at least set yourself up as a legitimate business and then they're gonna be much more likely to work with you. And I know this is very basic stuff, but a lot of people don't do it. You need to take yourself seriously if you're gonna work in this space. Now, a lot of people complain that paper call networks will not work with them. A lot of the people that complain are also not American. And the reason they're not willing to work with you is because you don't take yourself seriously, you don't, have an actual brand or business, you're not emailing them from a legitimate domain name, and you're not providing something of value to them, okay? Keyword there, them. 
You need to show whoever you want to do business with, whether it's a paper call network or any other company in any field, whether it's paper call or not, what you can offer them. No one really cares that you need something, okay? Let's be real for a minute. If you don't know somebody and you go talk to them, they don't care if you need their help. Honestly, they don't. Maybe they don't know who you are. Maybe they just don't care in general. But if you show up to someone and you're like, hey, I can provide you something of value, they're probably going to talk to you. They're probably going to work with you, all right? And so you need to think about that in the context of paper call. What can you provide the company you want to do business with of value? So they'll at least communicate with you because once they start communicating, that's when you can build a relationship. So first, whenever you communicate with a paper call network, you want to give them some background on who you are. Hi, my name is whatever. I'm getting into the paper call space. I have a background in the plumbing and home services industry. I know it well. Um, you know, my family has had businesses in this space. And I think I can add a lot of value to your network in home services because I understand how it works and I'm starting to drive calls in the space. Now, 99% of people that contact the paper call network don't write anything like that, okay? They don't write anything at all or they're like, Hey bro, work with me, why don't I get approved? All right, why don't you get approved? Because you're not offering them anything of value, not taking time to communicate properly, and so they're not gonna waste your time with you. You have to understand that paper call networks wanna make money, and the only thing that they're concerned about is making money, and so if they don't think you can help them make money, or uh, that you're gonna be a legitimate player in the space and you take yourself seriously, why would they bother working with you? Because then you have high fraud risk. If your email address is mafiaguys227 at yahoo.com and you say your name is John Smith, but you communicate like someone from India and you don't spell your words properly and you type like a 16 year old girl, guess what? They're not gonna reply to you because you're basically saying, I'm gonna be a problem I'm not working the way you're used to working, and I have a high propensity for fraud risk, and so it's just not happening, okay? And so the first thing you wanna do is show them you're a legitimate player, and that's about how you communicate to the paper call network, and have you taken the time to set up your business, okay? And then you're gonna to wanna to start a real relationship or friendship with the person that you're talking to. If you don't actually Find the people that work at these networks, reach out to them, and ask them about their business, who they are, what's important to them, what's working for them, how they got started in the industry, all this good stuff, you're not gonna be able to create a real relationship or friendship with them. And if you don't create a real relationship or friendship with people on an individual level, they're not going to work with you. And while you're doing that, while you're creating a real relationship with these people, you should do it on a human level. If I were getting into this space and I wanted to work with a paper call network, I would reach out to every single employee, doesn't matter what department that, are in that, they're, that they're in, and I would reach out to them and say something like, hey, I'm new in paper call, my background is in the plumbing industry, I think I can deliver a lot of value because my family's own business is in that space and I've spent 15 years in it and I'm really good at digital marketing and so I'm trying to create relationships with people at paper call networks. Do you have any tips or tricks on how I can get started in this space or best practices for me working with your company? And believe it or not, if you approach it like that, maybe you reach out to 10 people, you'll probably get three replies. And out of those three replies, you're gonna get some good ones where people are willing to go back and forth with you and you can ask them a lot of questions and then build a real relationship. How did you get started in the industry? What are some mistakes that you see new people in the industry make that make it complicated for you to do business with them? Right? You start asking questions like that that shows them you're serious and that you wanna learn about the space and learn the best way to work with them, that provides value. Because if they know that you care, 
they're probably going to work with you or at least give you a shot. And that's all you're looking for if you're new. You're looking for a shot. But that shot's not necessarily going to come easy, okay? These people, again, don't owe you anything. And so you need to take the time to tee this up in a way that they're going to be willing to invest the time with you, especially if you're new, all right? And so throughout this process, though, don't forget to sell. And by what I mean is you're selling yourself, right? You're saying, uh, I'm a smart guy or girl. I'm willing to work hard. Uh, I want to learn everything I possibly can, all right? And asking them questions about best practices when working with them is selling yourself as a legitimate player. And so the entire time you communicate with the paper call network, you should be selling yourself, all right? Next, make contacting you easy. And what I mean by that is set up an email that makes sense, put your phone number in it, put your Skype in it, put all your contact information in it, and do it in a professional manner so that it is very easy for these people to contact you. If they don't know how to reply or how to contact you or you don't give them options, well, guess what? They're not gonna reach out. And next, this is super basic, but it applies very much to foreigners, all right, non-Americans, and that's Communicate like an adult, please, and take the time to understand how American business people communicate if you want to do business with American business people. We're not going to adapt how we do business to you. Sorry, it's just not going to happen. You're just going to have to learn how we communicate. Now, what does that mean specifically? First and foremost, get spell check and spell things properly. If you type what as W-U-T, not a single paper call network representative is ever going to take you seriously. They're going to go, that guy is an idiot. He's not even taking the time to spell words properly. Why should I take them seriously? And maybe that flies in other countries. Really, if it does, it's fine. I don't care. But here, we look at how you spell and how you communicate with us and then judge you. We judge the shit out of you by how you communicate. And so if you're not going to communicate clearly and concisely and take the time to use proper spelling, good grammar, punctuation, no shorthand, well, guess what? We're probably not going to reply to you. And you need to wrap your head around that because most people in the space that I see that aren't making progress and complain that paper call networks won't talk to them, talk like idiots. Okay, they don't take the time to communicate well, and so they're just like, oh, this guy doesn't take himself seriously. He won't even spell words correctly. I do not trust this person. And if they don't trust you, they ain't gonna work with you. They're definitely not gonna do business with you. They're looking at that going, oh, this is a fraud problem. I'm not going anywhere near it. Now, maybe you're not a fraud problem. Maybe you genuinely care about business. You want to create something great and provide for your family and build a real business. Well, step one is learning how to communicate properly and then taking the time to do it. So whenever I write a letter that's important to either our team members, a client, my wife, anybody, I write it and then I proofread it out loud. I read it to myself out loud loud to make sure I didn't have any spelling errors or any mistakes in it or anything like that. And I'll do it a couple times, not just one. I'll proofread it once, twice, three times. And if you're writing a cold call letter to a network or someone else, you need to make sure that you communicate effectively, you show them something of value, and then you get all your English done correctly. And if English isn't your strong suit or your first language, well, go hire a tutor on Upwork, find someone to teach you, hire a virtual assistant that's a native English speaker to proofread your letters. I don't care how you do it, but there's no excuses here. If you don't communicate well in English, you're probably not gonna be successful in paper call, and you can't reach out to people like a 13-year-old girl would send a text message, because again, no one is gonna take you seriously. So. I think it's very important that you understand that I absolutely take my own advice. Now, early in 2018, I did not know a lot of the paper call network owners, which may be surprising because I'm one of the partners at Ringba, but at first we did not focus on working with paper call networks and building our technology for paper call networks. We did it for affiliates and media buyers and call centers. 
all the people that paper call networks do business with. So when I wanted to meet the CEO of every single paper call network, I had to cold call them. I didn't ask for introductions. I just did it the hard way, the old school way. And I have to tell you, I got almost 100% of them to reply. How did I do that? Let's take a look. First of all, I did it on LinkedIn. You can see that's my pretty face right there. My profile picture is actually me. My name is actually me. And I, the first thing I did in the subject was offer them something of value. Can I regularly refer you pay per call clients, right? Who's not gonna reply to that? Wait a second, who's this guy? Why does he wanna refer me business? That's a really interesting proposition. Okay, I'll give him 30 seconds, I'll open it, okay? So 100% of them that received it open it and read it, which is a really high uh, conversion rate. And you can do the same thing for you too. It's, uh, I would like to drive you quality phone calls, all right? Similar subject, offering them something of value. And then I was introduced myself, which you should absolutely do. Hi, their name. All right. I'm one of the partners at Ringba, and I'd like to refer their company name, Paper Call Clients on a regular basis. I repeated it just so there was no confusion what this was about. I said, hey, buddy, this message is not about me. It's about you. And so they're like, oh, okay, I'll keep reading. All right. I'm selling the entire time. We've been experiencing explosive growth in 2018 and our business development team gets asked for referrals to paper call networks numerous times a day, which is absolutely true. And I explained to them why I can do this for them. Wait a second, how can he refer me paper call clients on a regular basis? Oh, okay, he's one of the owners at the platform and the platform's been growing rapidly and his people get asked multiple times a day for referrals. Okay, yeah, I definitely wanna keep reading, all right? Most of our clients are affiliates, buyers, brokers, media buyers, and call centers with volume in North America, South America, Europe, and Asia. And so what I'm saying here is, we got tons of clients, they all do all sorts of different things. We got publishers, we got buyers, we got all different types of people all around the world, all right? So I'm showing them that our business has something of extreme value that they're interested in that covers all areas that they might be focused on, okay? And then I show them who I am, essentially. It's very important to me that when we refer our clients to another company that they're taken care of. Obviously, if we refer someone to you, we want you to at least reply. We want you to uh, talk to these people, all right? Otherwise, it makes us look bad if we don't have a two-way referral. Will you please provide me with the email address and Skype name of an account manager for both publisher side and advertiser sides of your business? And so I'm asking for a very simple thing. Please introduce me to the people you want us to refer business to. Great, that's the only thing I asked for. I'll introduce them to our biz dev team and let them know we'll be making client introductions. And then hopefully I end with a personal connection. Hopefully we'll have a chance to meet at a conference sometime. Thank you, Adam Young. Now I clipped my contact information out of here, but I gave them my personal cell phone number and I gave them my email address and I gave them my Skype name, okay? And so I got almost 100% reply out of the CEOs of every single paper call network on earth with this message. Now, when people tell me that paper call networks won't talk to them, I think to myself, they're crazy because I was able to cold call all of them, no questions asked. They had no idea who I was, okay? And that was in April of 2018. It's January 2019 now. And since I sent out these emails, uh, these messages on LinkedIn, we've actually sent over 10,000 referrals to paper call networks. We facilitated millions of dollars in business and for the most part, I've met every single one of these CEOs in person at a conference, introduced myself, and some of them I call close personal friends now. And so this is how you start a relationship, all right? It's not about what they can do for you, all right? It's what you can do for them. And if you don't communicate that way, well, guess what? You're probably not gonna get a reply because these people get cold called all the time of people who want something from them.
And so it's very rare that someone emails them and offers something of value, but it's not complicated to do. It's surely not. It's just taking the time to write a very nice, well put together letter and then read it out loud to yourself, proof it, and then make sure that it delivers something of value and then they reply. Okay, so if you're gonna cold call a paper call network, you need to step up your game. Your message should look like mine. It should not be one sentence or some nonsense chat. It should be a well put together sales letter selling them on why you can do something for, again, them, okay? And so that is how you open a business relationship. Now, here's a letter for you that's a little bit more tailored to an affiliate. And again, the same principles apply. Hi, person's name, Mr. Account Manager, whatever. Most people you can just address by their first name. You don't need misters in this space, okay? So you can be, hi, Bill. My name is Adam Young with Call Experts, and we've been in the digital marketing space for one year, 15 years, whatever it is. We've been seeing a ton of success in the plumbing vertical or home services verticals. We're currently generating 300 calls per day, 22 calls per day, 10 calls per day. If you're only generating a couple, just say 10 high quality calls per day. If you're not generating any calls, well, you need to find another way to show them that you could be a valuable partner, all right? The biggest problem we have right now is finding more buyers. A compliment goes a long way, guys. I hear great things about call experts and would love to work together. Ultimately, our goal is to find long-term partners to work with so that we can drastically increase our volume. All right, now anyone who takes the time to write a letter like this and to say long-term partners in it is probably really looking for long-term partners because the people who write letters that are about just making a quick buck regardless of how they do it, write shit letters, okay? And so they don't say things like this. They don't communicate this way. And so you should communicate this way. I'd like to better understand how you guys do business and how we can work together. Are you available sometime this week for a quick call? And this line's really important because you're saying you want to understand what's important to them, how they do business, and how you can fit into how they do business. And that's a great opener for a relationship. I want to learn about how you guys do business so I can tailor what I'm doing to make it best for you. You're saying I care, all right? And it's that simple. All this is about is communicating to the company that you care. It's really that simple, okay? Are you available sometime this week for a call? You wanna close? This is a closing statement, all right? Are you available and when a timeline's built into it, you wanna talk to them sometime in the next week and then looking forward to it. I'm assuming the close. I'm assuming they're gonna reply to me. I'm assuming we're gonna set up a call because I take myself seriously and then I finish that with my first and my last name, my phone number, my Skype, my email, my, my signature, my confidentiality notice, my logo's in there if it's an email. I've done a nice job of presenting myself as a legitimate business that gives a shit. And that's what you guys need to do, okay? And so, if you want introductions to Paper Call Networks, Ringba owns papercallnetworks.com. We'll make those introductions for you, but you have to follow the rules. We screen every submission, and we're looking for professionals and high quality referrals. What's that mean? No Hotmail, no Yahoo, and rarely Gmail. We will only authorize a Gmail if you are a Ringba customer, we know exactly who you are, and we know that your calls are legitimate. Now, if you submit some shit like this, which came through like yesterday, something badboys at gmail.com, again, not an American, Guess what? We are not making introductions for you. Nope, not a chance. I'm not risking my relationships with all those paper call networks because your ass won't take the time to at least look professional. It's not happening, so you guys need to pull your heads out of your asses because this happens all the time and just create a professional demeanor for yourself. Otherwise, we flush these. We're like, haha, not happening, not introducing you. You don't get a chance. Definitely not with our reputation. So again, this happens every single day of the week. We keep a log of them because we think it's hilarious 
and it's not helping anybody, especially you guys. So start to take yourself seriously and people will start to be willing to work with you. All right. Now, also, if you're getting into this space and you want to meet other people that are like minded or getting into this space, register for paper callers. All right. Now, the whole master class is on here. We'll discuss it with you. I'll even communicate with you and help guide you through the process of getting started. But the first thing to getting started in this space is creating a brand for yourself, like we said, and building a reputation for yourself. How do you do that? You communicate with the community, even if you're brand new, even if you just go introduce yourself and you're like, hey, I'm from, I'm from Germany and I'm getting into the pay per call space. My background's online marketing. I've done some lead generation, but I really am interested in calls. I've done a bunch of research in these verticals and would like to chat with people that are new and to talk about our journey together, all right? And so you just go post that on a forum and next thing you know, people start hitting you up and they're like, hey, I'm also new. Hey, I'm also working in pay per call. Hey, have you tried this? Are you having issues with that? You create relationships and friends in the space and then people see you publicly communicating and then they start to take you seriously or they start to at least trust you because you're putting yourself out there, okay? And that is how you build a relationship in the space with companies you wanna do business with. You put yourself out there, all right? Now, once you make a little bit of progress in this space, I highly encourage you to add value wherever you can, all right? Trust me, teaching and adding value, it's worth the time. It feels good. I'm enjoying myself right now and I've been doing this for hours, right? But I know that people will see what I'm doing here and it'll help them create businesses and a better life for themselves and that feels really good. So if you learn something in paper call, go to the forums, add value, reply to people with thought out replies, proofread your replies, write guides, training courses, and then publicly give them away. Now what that will do is not only it feels good, but it adds to your own personal credibility and says, oh, this guy's legit. He's helping out other people. He seems to know things about pay per call. And then everyone's gonna be willing to give you a chance. It's really that simple. If you go write some great guides and you communicate with the community and you prove publicly that you're willing to put yourself out there, which is accountability, and that you're willing to help people and that you have some knowledge about pay per call, guess what? People are gonna see it and they're gonna be willing to work with you. It's that simple, okay? Also on the forum, you can post for types of calls you have or need. And if you're gonna do that, include clear contact information. I am interested in 100 flight booking calls daily, okay? We've been in business for four years. We definitely have experience in the space. Here are our payment terms. Here is my contact information. And lastly, please proof your posts. Proofread your post every single time because when people see how you communicate in writing, they're judging you. And if you do a piss poor job, they're not going to trust you and they're not going to take you seriously. A lot of those foreigners wonder why they don't get taken seriously. And it's simple as because they don't proofread their posts and they don't communicate clearly. So make sure you proofread all your communication at all times. It's really important and it will drastically change the trajectory of your business. Okay, now in Facebook groups, you should join all of our Facebook groups. Ringba owns the world's largest community of paper call people. All you have to do is apply and the same thing goes. Some people when they apply, they don't answer our questions. Guess what we do? Click decline. And so if you can't take the time to answer the three questions we asked you, we are not gonna let you into our communities because we moderate them all. And if you can't take the time to do that, well, guess what? We can't take the time to mon uh, monitor your potential bad behavior. So we don't let you in. And people repeatedly apply to these groups and don't answer the questions. And they're probably over there wondering, why don't I get accepted? These guys are just excluding me because I'm not American or something. Well, guess what? We're just excluding you because you're lazy and kind of a jerk. You won't answer the questions. We're not letting you in. It's that simple, okay? And otherwise, we're like Switzerland. We let everybody in until they do something wrong and then kick them out, all right? We don't discriminate. 
We just judge you based on how you communicate and whether or not you fill out three simple questions. The last one is yes or no for Christ's sakes, okay? These Facebook groups are geared towards buyers and sellers of calls. So almost all of the paper call networks are in our Facebook groups. All their account managers are in the groups. Tons of affiliates and brokers, I'm talking about thousands of people are in there and they may not all communicate directly, but they're all reading it, and, okay? And so this is a great place to find new contacts and business partners and people to trade calls with, or also to share your journey, communicate, and ask questions with. Because the biggest experts in paper call are all in these paper, uh, all in these paper call groups on Facebook. And so when you ask a question, people will answer it, they'll communicate with you, and they'll also do a lot of business in these places. And you can see right here from my example that the people who communicate clearly, and I put some non-Americans in here to show you how this works and why these people are able to do it and why others aren't, uh, because I want you to understand that yes, you can put Live Calls Network or whatever as your logo, you put your logo as your name and then you use your real name and people will work with you. Here you go, we're buying 500 calls for the following verticals, airline, flight booking, rehab and addiction, home services, etc. Next guy, not an American. Health insurance calls available. If anyone genuinely wants to purchase calls, then private message me. All buffers are available with quality. You'll notice here that this guy took the time to use complete sentences, punctuation, grammar, all that good stuff, and to clearly say what he wants, okay? And then people reply with their contact information so that they can do business. It's that simple. This isn't rocket science. Just communicate clearly, say what you need in a way that's professional, and then professionals will come work with you. And then lastly, here's Brian looking for high quality calls and home services for Southern California only. Roofing, HVAC, solar, windows, and installation jobs within 90 miles of downtown Los Angeles. Great opportunity. Contact me directly to discuss. There is nothing in there but exactly what he wants and needs. And if you can provide that, he's willing to do business with you. There's no question what Brian needs in that post. There's no nonsense. It's clearly communicated. It's exactly what he needs. And he gets replies. All right, hey buddy, I'm currently promoting similar offers. Let me know if you still need traffic. That's it, that's it, and then they communicate together. But what all these people have done is communicated clearly and concisely, proofread what they wrote, and made sure that other professionals will understand it in a way that they're used to. And so they have adapted to the marketplace. They're not ex expecting the marketplace to adapt to them because that would be insane, all right? Online Skype groups, similar kind of thing. We have the biggest Skype group in pay per call. You're welcome to join it, all right? And I wanna be clear that you need to create an identity or brand here. If you join the Skype group with some cryptic name that's nonsense, like AdWords with a Z Pro 999 Super Seller or some nonsense, we're kicking your ass out, okay? Use your real name and show the community that you're a real person. And I eat my own dog food here. Here's my Skype profile. Again, not rocket science. It's a picture of me in a professional manner with my name. That's it. That's all this requires, and yet some people can't pull it together. All right, we're not talking about script kitties from 1999 that are trying to be cool on the internet. You need to be professional. You need to use your real name. You need to communicate clearly. If you look at this thread here, you'll see that Robert and Gerard and Anna and Kevin and Forhan, which is literally about the bottom of the barrel we will accept in the group here, okay? Communi put your real letters in the name, seriously. This, this is barely okay, and by the time you watch this, we probably aren't gonna allow it anymore, or omit here, okay? And it's the same kind of thing. They're communicating clearly. Does anyone have diabetic pain or brace leads with the compliance recordings, all right? I urgently need tax resolution calls, payout $56. I mean, there's nothing to this, guys. You just need to communicate clearly. So how do you join? On papercallers.com, there's a link to all of our groups and communities. You just click it and you're in. It's that simple. How to interact? Interact professionally, clearly. Don't run around talking shit for no reason. Don't argue with people. There's almost 600 people in the group right now. Not everyone wants to hear you're whining and complaining, okay? Either add value to the group 
or you will be politely removed from the group by our, in our moderation team, okay? And there's no second chances in our group. Nada, we don't allow it. You're in, you be a professional, or you're out, and we don't let you back in. We don't care, honestly, it's not our problem, and it's not our prerogative to give people second chances. So be an adult, come in, conduct yourself, with professionalism and we'll let you do business. And so millions of dollars a month in business happens in our Skype groups, guys. So just be on your best behavior. How to address a company? Real simply, hi paper callers. Is anyone from X network in the group? I would like to run your tax offer. That's it, that's all you get, all right? I don't wanna see any complaining in the group that you weren't accepted into paper call networks. All right, if you do that, we're kicking you. If you don't take the time to watch this video and pull your shit together, well, you're not welcome, all right? What not to do? No spamming, okay? You post the link to just about anything, you're getting the boot, all right? No service providers. We do not allow service providers to advertise in this group. That includes Ringba. Ringba does not advertise in this group. We don't tell people about our products or services. We don't allow other people to do it as well. It's a forum and a safe place for people to conduct business. It's not put together so that other people can reap the advertising value of our hard work. So nothing will get you ejected faster than advertising a product or service. And when you do that, we don't just kick you from the Skype group. You get banned across all of our communities. We don't care. If you wanna advertise your product or service, Go to papercallers.com and do it in the product or services section that we set up so you can do it, all right? No private message spamming. A lot of people in this group have personal relationships with Ring the Team members, and if someone reaches out to them and constantly hits them about spam because they hit everyone in the group with nonsense, we remove them immediately. If you private message someone in the group a link, or anything promotional related not to calls, you're out, not happening, all right? And no trashing people. If you have a dispute or an issue, you can say it politely in the group, but this is not a forum for you to run around and try and hurt people or bash reputations or anything like that. If someone hasn't paid you on time, you're welcome to tell the group that you haven't received a payment on time and you would like to get in contact with someone at that company but you're gonna give them a fair chance to resolve it. You're not going to just run around saying that they're a bad company or some nonsense like that. Otherwise, you will also get the boot. All right, LinkedIn groups, these are a bit less active, but they're really good because a lot of people conduct business on LinkedIn, all right? And so they're great for making new business connections, great for finding buyers and sellers and other people in pay per call. All right, and you can just search paper call in the top on LinkedIn and you'll get a list of people who have paper call in their profile. Just start messaging them. That's it. Do it with a nice letter like I showed you. Pay for LinkedIn premium. It's like 70 bucks a month or something. Uh, it's an investment, but in messages are amazing. All, most of the paper call network CEOs that I called called were in messages. And so you can't do that unless you have a paid account, okay? I highly recommend getting a paid account. I don't own stock in LinkedIn. I'm just saying that it's a good idea, all right? And again, the best way to interact is to add value. It's to tell the person why you can bring them something of value and you will get a reply. Don't spam people, don't send crappy messages, don't spam people's service provider stuff or links or any of that, because you're gonna generate a reputation for yourself as a spammer and then no one's gonna take you seriously, okay? And then make sure your personal LinkedIn profile is up to date. At bare minimum, it should show your current company that you're using to promote pay per call. Should have a link to that page with the logo on it and a description of what that company does, even if you're an affiliate. I run an affiliate agency for pay per call and I'm working in these spaces, blah, 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 okay? It doesn't matter as long as you put something in there. You should describe yourself and put a little introduction in there. You should show some previous jobs, your degree, where you went to school, a few things that interest you, and your profile picture, again, should be a real picture of you with a real name, and guess what? People will take you seriously if you're real with them. It's really that simple, all right? And then if you wanna find offers, and you wanna find which networks to work with that are working in your space, 
Offervault.com is a great place to do it. Most of the paper call networks have a good amount of their offers listed there with payouts and a bunch of other information. And so you can search and see who has offers in specific verticals. When you find one, reach out to the network and just tell them specifically what you want. Hey, I saw that you had a final expense life insurance offer on Offer Vault that pays $26. Is that offer still valid? I would like to work with you on it. I have final expense calls. What are some of the terms of your offers or some of the rules of this campaign so that I can see if my traffic works with how your offers work? It's that simple, okay? Try to schedule a call, whatever, but again, communicate clearly and always, under all circumstances, proofread your messages. It's that simple, okay? Now, trade shows. I wanna spend a little bit of time on this because trade shows are near and dear to my heart, all right? My business partner that I've done business with for a long time now, five plus years, and who I've known for over a decade, I met at Ad Tech in San Francisco, okay? He's one of my best friends, family, and now my business partner, and we do a ton of business together. We created Ringba together, and I met him at a trade show. Now, I can tell you right now that the vast majority of my friends are people I met at trade shows, whether I do business with them or not. I have so much fun at trade shows. I meet so many cool people, so many smart people that I go to all these things. We take ring boats to them all. We spend a lot of money at trade shows because they're amazing. Now, some people, they're like very negative on trade shows. They're like, it's a lot of work. I got a man a booth blah, blah, blah. Well, those people are just toxic, okay? Trade shows are awesome. They're absolutely awesome. They're the best place to create lasting relationships in an industry, okay? First and foremost, if you show up to a trade show, we just automatically take you seriously. It doesn't even matter if you're like, yeah, I'm brand new. I don't even have a single phone call a day, but I showed up because I want to learn. I'm like, oh, well, shit, this guy's serious. He traveled to a trade show where he doesn't live, got a hotel room, paid to be there, is acting professional, being honest with me. Well, what can I do for you, sir? And at the last trade show, at this one, at the Paris, at Affiliate Summit West, I had a gentleman come up to me who saw the paper collar show and was like, hey, man, I saw the paper collar show and you keep telling people to show up to trade shows, so I came. I don't know a whole lot about paper call, but I would really like to work with hyper-target marketing, and I'm super excited about being in the space. And so I spent like 15 minutes talking to the guy. When I had to talk to someone else, one of my team members spent another 20 minutes talking to that guy, giving him tips, tricks, and all that good stuff. And guess what? Someone from hyper-target marketing needed to talk to one of our team members because we refer people back and forth and work with them in various ways. And I was like, oh, hold on a second. Hey, here's a hyper target guy. Hey, here's a new guy. He's interested in paper call, but he came all the way out here and seems professional. You guys should talk. And he was like, oh, okay, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to work with you. Bam, that simple. Relationship created, opportunity created. Why? Because two professional humans showed up at a trade show and decided to shake hands. And it's really that simple, guys, okay? I learned the entire paper call space simply by showing up at trade shows. I learned the entire digital advertising space simply by going to trade shows, okay? You can build your entire business from a trade show if you just show up. From nothing to multi-millionaire trade shows, okay? And I'll tell you what, a lot of my friends that own a lot of the companies at these trade shows, the biggest sponsors at all these industry trade shows for affiliate marketing and pay per call are some of my good friends. And they started their business by showing up at trade shows and now they own some of the biggest companies in the space five, 10 years later or whatever it is. So if you're not gonna go to a trade show, I don't take you seriously and other people aren't either, so just show up, okay? That's the minimum requirement for a trade show is just being there. If you can't afford the pass, wait outside the trade show and try and talk to people, honestly, seriously, okay? My business partner, Harrison, 
when he started in the space, was 13 years old. They wouldn't even let him in because he wasn't 18 years old. And so he bought the pass but ended up just parking himself outside the door because he couldn't get in. And then created millions of dollars of business as a teenager just standing outside the door in the lobby. So if he can do it, you can do it. But at bare minimum, you got to show up. Okay? And next, show up prepared, please. Okay? Understand who you need to talk to, who's at the trade show, why you're going to be there, what your goals are, why you're talking to people, what you need, what you can give, and, and all those things. Okay? You need to think about it before you show up, all right? Make a bullet list with a bunch of goals, what you want to achieve, why, who you want to meet. Literally make a, a list of who you want to meet, all right? And don't have any expectations. And if you walk up to a booth and I'm personally there, and I am a lot, and you're like, hey, Adam, I'd really like to meet the CEO of whatever company, all right? And you tell me your story and I don't feel comfortable, I'm gonna be like, no, sorry. Can't do it, you know? Maybe I tell you why, maybe I don't, doesn't matter, but don't have expectations. It's not fair to expect something out of someone you don't know, okay? Now, just like the other guy, if you come up to me and you're super excited and you have a good story and it makes sense and you really wanna get some business done and your request is reasonable, well, maybe I'll help you out. Maybe I won't. It doesn't matter, but the fact is you get an opportunity. You get the opportunity to speak to someone and to ask. And just because you ask does not guarantee you'll get it. But if you don't ask, you are guaranteed not to get what you want, okay? And so maybe the first day, it doesn't go well. Maybe I have a meeting, I gotta run, I can't help you. Maybe you just be persistent and come back, talk to me again, and then maybe you get your way. I don't know, but don't have those expectations, all right? And treat people with, with respect. Just because they're there does not mean they owe you anything doesn't mean they have to do business with you. You should treat them professionally, with respect, ask nicely, use please, thank you, shake hands, okay? And with treating people with respect, you need to treat yourself with respect, especially if you're new, all right? Dress professional, even if you see other people who don't. As humans, we judge people immediately by the way they dress, okay? And I mean, I'm not showing up to a trade show in a t-shirt and some yoga pants, but I'm at home right now in my home office, so I can do whatever I want. It doesn't matter. And I'm giving something of immense value, so I'll dress however I please. But at a trade show, you're going to see me in a jacket, in a nice shirt. I'm going to look professional because I'm conducting business, and the people I'm conducting business with are going to judge me by how I dress and present myself. Now, if you're really ambitious and you don't like wearing a suit, I'm cool with that. Hit up a company like Queensboro or just Google it yourself and get your logo embroidered on a polo shirt and then people will take you seriously. A lot of our team uh, wears polo shirts or, or ring the t-shirts and we don't have a problem with that. So our rule for trade shows is that all of our people at the trade shows either need to wear a jacket and a collared shirt, so like a suit jacket and a collared shirt, or Ringba branded apparel. If they wanna sport the company brand and they wanna be a little bit more comfortable in a polo, even a polo and jeans, I'm okay with that as long as they're professional. And so professionalism is repping your brand or dressing like a business person. Those are your only two options. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend coming. Now, I know guys that have been in the industry for 10 years and they wear a t-shirt and jeans and sneakers and don't give a shit. Well, those guys probably have multi-million dollar businesses and personal relationships with everyone that they need. And so it doesn't matter to them. And that's a different story. But if you are new and you want to be taken seriously, dress like a professional. Okay? Like I said, that guy I was talking, to, talking about that, that wanted a referral, well, he was wearing a suit. And so I was like, all right, well, that guy got dressed up. He's taking himself seriously. He's not going to make me look bad. So sure, I'll help him out. If you look like a hooligan and you're dressed like shit and you come up and ask for something, especially a referral, they're like, eh, you know, I don't know how comfortable I feel in referring you because it reflects on me as a business person. And so, eh, right? And so dress matters. Also, have a plan. Seriously, have a plan. All right, we're going to talk about how to build a plan in a minute, but you need to know who you're going to talk to, who you want to find, and why, and you want to have goals so that you can accomplish them. Because this costs money. 
All right, you have to have goals at a trade show for what you want to get done, and then you want to see if you meet those goals, and that's part of a plan. And have professional business cards. It costs like 25 bucks on Upwork or Fiverr to get someone to do a design, all right? And it costs essentially nothing to have those cards printed. There's a printer in Las Vegas called Digital Insights Printing. We'll put the link below. These guys are amazing, okay? They will print same day just about anything. They never miss a deadline. I've been using them for years. They never ever miss a deadline. They take PayPal, they communicate over email, phone, however you want to do it, and they can make just about any type of promotional material, all right? I don't own this business. I never even met them in person. All I know is they've always taken care of me for years, and I highly recommend them, and they're super cheap. And so if you need same-day business cards or cheap business cards that are really well done and have an easy printing process, Digital Insight Printing are your guys. Just hit them up. It's going to cost you like... 40 or 50 bucks for 500 or 1,000 color, beautiful business cards. Have them made because if you don't have a business card and you go to a trade show and someone asks for your card, well, and you don't have a card, you look like a jackass, right? And then people start to wonder, well, I've never heard of this guy. He doesn't have business cards. Eh, he doesn't seem to be organized. Maybe I don't really want to trust him uh, with money or trust him with calls or something, okay? And then if you have really important meetings you need to get done and you've been communicating with people, pre-schedule them so you can guarantee you get the time you need. If you wanna to talk to me and it's really important to you to talk to me and you don't schedule a meeting, well, there's a high likelihood you're not gonna get your chance because I got meetings all day from people who took the time to schedule them. And I don't miss meetings. That makes me look bad if I do. And when I promise someone my time, I give it to them because it's the right thing to do. And so if you don't schedule a meeting with me, you might not get that time. And that goes for everybody in the space. Not everyone's gonna be perfect. Not everyone's gonna be like super on it with their meetings, I understand this. But you should at least try if it's important to your business. And then maximize your time. Don't go hang out at the bar or don't you know, waste time on the internet. Talk to as many people as you possibly can, even if they're not call related. Even if you don't know if you should do business with them or you don't know what they do. You should talk to as many people as you possibly can, connect with them on LinkedIn, create as many industry relationships as you can so that as you build your business, you're like, oh yeah, I need to, I need to talk to those guys. I need SEO services now or whatever. Oh yeah, cool, I have their contact. I'm connected on LinkedIn, I can reach out. I have a relationship. And so building relationships is an investment in your own future. You should take the time to do it. By the time a trade show is done, they're like two or three days long. Your ass should be physically exhausted. I mean, physically exhausted, okay? I am, I get like no sleep. I don't party, I don't drink. We throw a lot of parties, but I don't do any of that because I have to invest so much energy into it that by the time I get home, I walk, walk in the door and usually just fall asleep, okay? That's how hard you should go if you wanna make a lot of money leveraging trade shows, all right? And then always find and attend the industry events. At Affiliate Summit, Ringba threw two, not one, but two paper call events. Over 1,500 people in paper call RSVP'd between the two. And tons of connections were made at those events. Also, they're a lot of fun. We did open bars and food, uh, great music, great venues. I mean, they're a lot of fun to come to those events. And you just get to mingle with people in a casual environment. And so I'm much more likely to make a referral at one of these networking events than I am at the trade show. So at the trade show, I got to walk away from the booth, right? But at the networking events, everyone's just chilling, making friends. And here's the thing. When you're at an industry event, it's okay to ask people what they do. It's okay to talk to them about business. That's what they're there for. But be cool about it and make a friend too. Don't be just hardline business. Make a friend. Ask them about how they got started in the industry. Talk to them about where you're at. And don't just talk about you. Ask people questions. If you're new in this space, you should be asking a hell of a lot more questions than telling your story. And you should try and be a sponge and smoke, uh, soak up as much information as you can possibly get. All right, and don't be scared to reach out and meet CEOs, all right? When I was young, I was a teenager. I went to my first industry trade show and I was concerned. 
I was like, man, I really need to talk to the CEOs of some of these companies so I can pitch them my ideas. And I'm like a little kid, a teenager. And I thought that these people were not approachable. I mean, they're the CEO, right? Well, I'm the CEO. I'm just hanging out at home in yoga pants, teaching you some stuff. I'm just a normal guy. So are all the other CEOs in the space. They started out not CEOs. They all started somewhere just like you. And so don't be scared of talking to them. They're more than willing to talk to you. They're even more than willing to help you in most cases if you make the time to reach out to them and talk to them. And so don't be scared about reaching out to anybody. But at the same time, don't have expectations. Just because you reach out doesn't mean they're, they're going to talk to you. Okay? And a simple way to look at those odds is looking at the size of their company. If the CEO of a company that has 300 people is at a trade show, the likelihood you're going to get five minutes with them is low. They have 300 employees. They got tons of deals they're working on. It's low. But at these trade shows where a lot of people that work in calls have five to 25 employees, the CEOs are actually quite as accessible and you should reach out to them and create those relationships because those are the people that have the most information and are the most successful in the space. They're the ones who can teach you the most, all right? So here are some suggested trade shows for pay per call. And these are, if you're new and you wanna meet a bunch of networks, or a wide assortment of audience when it comes to digital marketing and pay per call. Uh, Affiliate Summit West is great. We just did that one. Affiliate Summit East in New York, it's a little smaller, but if you're on the East Coast, it's an easy trip. Uh, a lot of call people go. If you're in Europe, there's Affiliate Summit Europe, okay? Not as big in calls. If you're brand new and you wanna go to a trade show and Europe's a big investment, you gotta fly from America, I wouldn't recommend that one as your first go. All right, you're gonna to need to know how to work a trade show and have some relationships before you start traveling around the world, uh, especially if you're not turning a profit because these are expensive investments. You got a lot of money behind you and you wanna accelerate your, your progress, go to as many of these things as you possibly can. That's it, all right? LeedsCon, LeedsCon Las Vegas is probably the best trade show for general pay-per-call. That is the most players in pay-per-call and service providers and networks are gonna be at LeedsCon. I highly recommend that, okay? Uh, Connect to Convert is LeedsCon Boston. Smaller, but also a good show. I spend a lot of time with higher level people at Connect to Convert because uh, only the higher level people ended up showing up because it's a smaller show, so it was really valuable for me, and I highly recommend it, okay? Traffic and Conversion is like all affiliates and all people who are trying to drive traffic. That's in downtown San Diego in late February. I highly recommend that one too, because you can meet a lot of like-minded people and learn a lot of strategies around how pay-per-call works and how you can generate traffic for it. There's gonna be less buyers and less networks at traffic and conversion, but that doesn't mean there's less value there. It all depends on what your business model is and what you hope to get out of the space, okay? So how are you gonna work a trade show? So this is a picture of me with uh, Dan and Sean, two of our biz dev team there, and you can see that Sean's dressed professional, business casual, Dan's got a ring, the t-shirt on, both are acceptable for us, um, and it works really well. You don't, you don't necessarily have to do a suit, you just need to look professional, groom yourself, all that good stuff. So you're gonna set up a game plan. How do you set up a game plan? First thing you do is determine your goals. What are your goals for this trade show? What do you hope to get out of it? Okay, that's step one. Once you write those out, and I do mean write them out, you should write down your three top goals on paper so you can commit them to memory. You need to find a list of company targets that you need to talk to. Now, before these trade shows, they all release exhibit hall and meat market or uh, whatever they call it, maps of the actual companies that are exhibiting at the show. So step one is making a list of company targets that have invested in exhibiting at the show. Now, if a company invests in exhibiting, they're spending a lot of money. They're flying their team members out, they're creating a booth, they're paying for that space, they're putting everyone up in hotels. It costs tens of thousands of dollars to exhibit at even a small trade show with a small booth. And it's important to realize that because if someone's willing to spend that kind of money to exhibit at a trade show, they're probably a legitimate company, you wanna talk to them. Now, not all companies in pay-per-call exhibit, not even all the big ones 
exhibit. Some of the biggest companies in the space do not exhibit, but they do have representatives that are at the show. And so you wanna make a list of company targets based on the exhibitor list, but you also wanna make a list of companies that you would just like to talk to, and then you're gonna to have to reach out to them separately to see if they're going to the show. Now, if you hit up someone on LinkedIn, and the, the subject line is, are you going to ASW or are you going to LeedsCon? I'd love to meet. You're going to have a high return rate because you're basically saying, yeah, I'm professional. You're professional. You want to hang out in Vegas? People are pretty open-minded about that, okay? So showing up is half the battle again. Download the app. Most of these trade shows have their own trade show app. And inside that app, they're going to have all different types of features like exhibitor lists, uh, other attendees. You can create a profile in there. If you create a profile, use your real name, use a professional image, okay? Put your company website and information in there. And then you can start reaching out to other people. Sometimes these apps even have exchanges. I'm looking for X, I'm looking for Y. I want to accomplish these goals. And you see people that say these things, you can write yours as well. And then you start to make connections before the trade show and then you schedule meetings to meet with people so you can learn from them, talk to them, whatever. If someone doesn't have a lot of time to meet with you, if they're like, hey, I can do 10 minutes or I can do five minutes, don't be offended, take it. Because if they're super busy and they're willing to carve out a five minute block for you, well, they're doing it, they're, they're doing it. They're willing to meet you. So take your five minutes, maybe they have more time and then once you talk to them, they realize you're cool, they give you more time, but don't be offended, take what you can get, okay? That's how you build relationships. Then you wanna learn who the players are. If you're getting into calls, you need to know who all the employees are at all the companies you wanna work with and who the players are in the space. You need to know who the biggest call buyers are, who the biggest paper call networks are, who the biggest brokers are, who the affiliates are, who we are, right? You need to know who everyone is and you can find them all on LinkedIn. You can look at all their pictures and you can make a hit list basically, all right? May sound a little creepy, but you should absolutely do that. You should make a list of people, who they are, what their job function is and who you wanna to talk to. And you should have that on your phone and you should be like, all right, I'm gonna work this trade show. Here are the people I wanna meet and create relationships with. And you're like on a treasure hunt. Like, all right, I wanna to talk to Adam from Ringba. Let me go find him. Is he at the booth? Where's he at? Ask his employees. Hey guys, have you seen Adam? Oh no, he'll be back around, whatever. All right, cool, I'll swing by. Here's my card, can you tell him I'm looking for him? Okay, it's a treasure hunt, basically. And so find out who all those people are, connect with them online first, introduce yourself, tell them you're gonna be at the trade show, tell them you wanna talk to them, all right? Sometimes you're gonna need to reach out to people multiple times before they're willing to talk to you. Happens to me too. Right? Sometimes I hit people up and they just don't want to talk to me. And that's okay. I'm not offended. They'll eventually talk to me because I don't go away that easy. And if someone won't talk to me, I just keep hitting them up, keep finding things of value that I can offer in them. And sooner or later, they're going to come talk to me. It's a foregone conclusion. So I'm not offended. In fact, I like it when people won't talk to me because then it's a challenge. And then they're never getting away, right? Because I'm just going to keep hitting them up over and over again until they'll at least meet me, be friends, talk to me, and that's okay. You should expect that. You should not be offended by it. Again, no expectations, okay? Schedule your meetings. Try and get as many meetings on the books with people as you possibly can that are important to you. And at a trade show, if you have a meeting and it's important, exchange cell phone numbers so you can text them. Hey, just wanted to hit you up. We got a meeting in 30 minutes. I wanted to let you know that I'll be there and I'll be on time. Now, if someone sent me a text message like that, I'd be like, whoa, that's not normal. All right, buddy, let's do it. I got you. Yeah, man, I'll be there. Let's do it. In fact, if you have some extra time, I got an extra 15 minutes, I can come a little early. That's what I would do if someone actually sent me that text message. I can tell you right now that most people don't, and most people don't show up to meetings on time, all right? And the, the worst thing you can possibly do is not show up to a meeting on time because some of us take that seriously. And if you get a meeting with someone who takes themselves seriously, like a VP or an executive, and then you don't show up on time and they're on time, their immediate thought is, this guy's a jackass, I don't take him seriously, all right? And so just show up on time. It says a lot about who you are and how you operate. In today's world, a lot of people don't show up on time. 
That tells me everything I need to know about how that person conducts themselves, whether it's true or not, I judge you by it because I show up on time 100% of the time. And if someone is serious, I expect them to. And if they don't, they're not respecting my time. And so they're probably not gonna respect my money either. And eh, I don't take that very seriously. So show up on time if you schedule your meetings and try and schedule as many meetings as possible. You wanna treat this like a marketing campaign, okay? A trade show effectively is an in-person door-to-door marketing campaign. You wanna work it by the numbers. And so if you have, I don't know, 20 companies you wanna work with and there's 50 people from those companies that are gonna be there, you need to try and meet as many as possible and create a relationship with as many as possible because you're not gonna get 100% of them, you're not gonna convert 100% of the people at a trade show into a relationship, just like you're not gonna convert 100% of your calls into conversions or clicks into calls and all that good stuff. It's the same thing, okay? And if you don't have enough people to talk to, just speak to someone at every single booth, every single one, because someone paid tens of thousands of dollars to be there, their business is probably interesting to a marketer if it's a marketing trade show, speak to every, every single booth if you can, all right? And the money is in the expo hall, it's not in the panels. If there are panels about paper call or panels that interest you, fine, go to them. But the money is not in the panels. That's not where you're gonna change the course of your business. The money is in the relationships you can create at the exhibit hall and around the exhibit hall. I don't go to the panels. You're never gonna catch me there unless I'm giving a panel, right? Same for all the other experts in paper call. The only time they're gonna go to the panels is if they're actually giving the panel. So if you're new and there's some experts in paper call or lead gen that are giving panels, I respect that. You should probably go to them, okay? But you should not spend eight hours at a trade show at the panels just because you paid for access to the panels. You should be at the exhibit hall creating relationships because that's where you're going to change your future. At the exhibit halls where you're gonna run into someone, you're gonna make friends, and they're gonna be like, oh bro, it was great to meet you. Are you going to the, the paper callers party tonight? That's where you're gonna find out about industry events and other things going on. I can't tell you how many times I've been at a trade show as an affiliate many, many years ago, and I'd run into somebody that I knew digitally, and they'd be like, oh, Adam, dude, I'm going to this private uh, a super affiliate party. You wanna come? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Next thing you know, I'm in a limo with people that are all making millions of dollars a year doing marketing. I got a whole bunch of new friends. Then I'm at this ridiculous party at a villa on the top of a casino. I meet the CEOs of some companies I wanna do business with. I have a great time. You know, like that's how a trade show evolves. And you're never gonna see that unless you communicate with a lot of people. You make friends and you make industry friends, okay? And I'm telling you again, all my closest friends are industry people. Maybe that's lame. Maybe that makes me lame. Maybe it says that I should go out and make more friends. I don't know, but I really like my industry friends. We have a lot of fun. I see them a few times a year because uh, they're all super busy. But man, if I call those people and I have a business opportunity, they're answering the phone and we get business done. So it's, uh, it's really a good way uh, to create an engine for yourself that can sort of jumpstart your business, all right? And next, just like anything, you want to book your travel and pass as early as possible, all right? Why? Because they get progressively more expensive as you get closer to the event. And I see a lot of people, when the event gets close, uh, close to actually happening, hitting up Skype groups and stuff going, does anyone have any passes? They sold out, oh no, I can't get a pass. Or does anyone have a pass they don't want? I can get it at a discount. I don't want to pay full price. Well, look, here's the thing. If you just are an adult and you register for the trade shows early, you get the best price, all right? And if you didn't, hit up a Ringva representative. We usually have a discount code that we can give to anybody for 100 bucks off or 20% off the pass price. Because we exhibit at all these trade shows and we sponsor them, we get special discounted rates. So hit up our people, even if you're not our client, we will take care of you if you can, it's not a problem. And also, because Ringba has so many clients that go to these trade shows, we now book blocks of hundreds of hotel rooms at discounted rates, usually better than the ones that the, uh, the uh, actual trade show gets 
and typically at better hotels because a lot of our clients don't want to stay at the Paris at the actual event. They want to stay at the Cosmo because it's Vegas and fun. So at the last Vegas trade show, I think we had something like 100 rooms at the Cosmo that we sold to our clients for 30% less than Expedia rates, which are the lowest anywhere for the Cosmo. So because we buy so many rooms for our clients and our team, we're able to get great discounted rates. And we don't really care if you're our client or not, if you're going and you want those discounted rates, hit up a Ringba rep, we'll get you in contact with our travel team and they can help you with that, okay? All right, so when we look at a trade show map, we wanna make a list of all the exhibitors we wanna meet with. All of these trade shows have exhibitor booth numbers or table numbers and an actual map that you can look at and see where someone's actually exhibiting. And so you can actually plan and plot all your course through this and work it systematically. Now this is the meat market legend at Affiliate Summit West. And if this is one day, you only get one shot, okay? And even if you're really good at this and you wanna hit every single table, the likelihood you can do that is very low, okay? It is a big event and it is exhausting. So first you need to make a list of all the people that are the most important to your business by priority, okay? And then write down their booth number. And if I were you, I'd just screenshot this and you can just you know, put a dot in Windows Paint if you have no computer skills uh, on where you need to meet and have a list of all the booth numbers. You can have this right on your phone, scroll through it and find the people you're looking for. Next step is all those people you absolutely wanna meet. You're gonna connect with them all on LinkedIn. You're gonna make a list of everyone you wanna to talk to, even if they won't connect with you, so that you know who you need to talk to, all right? Schedule your most important meetings first and try and do those about a month in advance because those meeting slots for the important people fill up really quick and if you try and do it last minute, it's probably not gonna work. Exchange contact info and try and get the cell phone number of the person so you can text them before the meeting, hey, I'm gonna be on time, I'm looking forward to the meeting, see you in 30 minutes at the corner bar or whatever it is, put where the meeting's happening in that text message so that they have no excuse, all right? Hold them accountable, all right? And then you wanna figure out how many people you need to meet with that are important, and you probably wanna talk to them for, I don't know, five to 15 minutes if you can, and then you need to determine a schedule to see how many meetings you can actually effectively do. If you wanna meet with you know, 67 people at this trade show and you gotta track them all down, and you only get one day to do it, you're probably not gonna meet them all, so you need to prioritize all those people by what's most important to you, and then you should have your pitch customized for every single one of these people so you can tell them why you can drive value to them so that you can open up the, re the relationship. You should expect that some of your meetings won't happen. People will cancel, try and reschedule, no call, no show, whatever. Some people are shitty. You should expect it. All right, don't get upset. Just keep on hustling. And don't forget to RSVP for industry events. For pay per call, we put all the pay per call industry events on, a, on the forum there with the RSVP links whether they are our event or not, so that you know where they are and you can RSVP for them. I'll tell you right now that our last event hit capacity, we turned people away. The party the following night, because we threw two, also hit capacity, we turned people away. So show up early to the events, all right? Maybe you wait in line, maybe you walk in and there's not a lot of people there yet, but guess what, you're inside. And so it's a lot better than being outside if you wanna meet people and do business. All right, now let's talk about relationship building and online cold calling, okay? Any type of cold calling is a numbers game. Some will, some won't, so what? Someone else is waiting. Do not be offended if people won't talk to you or if they won't do business with you or they're jerks or whatever. This is about you building a successful business and if it were super easy and everyone was required to do business with you, well, that would be a different world than we live in. Business is hard, it requires real work, it requires commitment and dedication, and if you're unwilling to put that in and take some shit sometimes and be willing to chalk up some no's, you're not gonna be successful, so you should just expect it. And if you don't expect it, that's your fault, honestly, okay? Again, how you communicate is extremely, extremely, extremely important. It takes you more time to communicate well, I understand this and time is valuable, 
but your conversion rate when you communicate well is exceptionally higher than the otherwise. It's just like an advertising campaign. If you create a crappy ad that's got misspellings in it with bad grammar and you run it on Facebook with no image and you look like you don't know what you're doing, no one clicks it, no one buys, right? It's the same thing. If you communicate well and you got a great presentation and it gets to the point, more people are willing to read it and then more people will do business with you. It is the same thing as an advertising campaign. So again, expect to be told no for people to not reply and some people who just don't want to do business with you and maybe they won't even tell you why, okay? It happens. You shouldn't be offended by it. I had someone at the last trade show uh, straight up tell me they're not interested in my product or service when I said, hey, my name's Adam. Literally, they're like, not interested. I'm like, okay, fine, great, that's cool. We'll start off that way. We'll get this part of it out of the way because you are interested and I'm coming for you. And so that's fine. When people tell you no, you should just consider it a buying sign because guess what? They at least are talking to you because some people won't and those are the really tough ones, all right? And so be persistent, but be polite. Okay, don't be offended, don't get defensive. It's okay if someone doesn't wanna do business with you, all right? We're not fragile snowflakes here. We gotta develop a thick skin, all right? And then realize that your first attempt may not work, okay? Just because you took the time to reach out to someone does not make you entitled to their reply. But that also does not mean you should not keep reaching out to them. Some people value persistence. If people don't reply to you, change your approach because clearly your approach did not work, all right? And try and build a real relationship with someone versus immediately jumping to business, all right? Some people just want to get to business and that's fine, all right? If they're talking to you and they just want to get to business, just get to business. But most of the time you want to build a real relationship with people because more often than not, people want to do business with people they like. Not people that they can make money with, but people they like, okay? And so creating that relationship is extremely important and extremely valuable. So if we're going to cold call on the internet, all right, on LinkedIn, for instance, we're gonna do some selling subjects if you're an affiliate. Can I sell you calls? That just gets right to it. Oh, this guy has calls. Wants to know if he can sell them to me. All right, I'll click that, bam. Are you buying calls in a specific vertical? Are you buying towing calls? Question mark. If they don't reply, guess what? They don't buy towing calls, okay? Because that's simple. That's a great subject line. All right, that gets right to the point. If they don't reply, there's your answer. If they do reply, they're buying towing calls, okay? All right, there's no need to get defensive or be worry, worry about anything there. It gets to the point. Or I have excess insurance calls. Same thing. Or need home for overflow calls. Same thing, okay? When you're more explicit and get to the point, you're gonna get your responses or no responses and you're just gonna get the job done, all right? On the other side, if you're gonna buy calls, can you sell me towing calls? Looking for towing calls. I need plumbing calls right away. Need to sell XX whatever calls per day, okay? need to buy XX whatever calls per day. So 28 or 300 insurance calls a day. Super simple, not rocket science. You just need to communicate concisely, okay? So, hi Bill, great to meet you. I need to buy 300 insurance calls per day as soon as possible. I see we have quite a few mutual connections and I've got plenty of references. I'm flexible on payment terms and I'm looking for long-term partners. Is this something you may be able to help with? If someone opens this message, reads it, and doesn't reply to you, they're not interested, they don't have those calls, they don't wanna buy those calls, they're not the right partner for you. But if they open this and read it, and they can buy or sell you whatever calls with this specific simple message, I guarantee you they're probably gonna reply, okay? This is how you should be communicating when you cold call, all right? you can. Throw other stuff in there if you want to add personality. If they're also from, uh, you know, Tampa University and you went to Tampa University or Florida State or whatever, throw it in there. Oh, hey, fellow Gator, how's it going? 
but quick, okay, not a lot, all right? Just simple and to the point. This is how you open up a relationship. Now, Facebook, it's the same thing. If you're gonna do it over Messenger, all right, you just need to get to the point and communicate well. Introduce yourself, all right? Hey, I'm Adam Young with Call Experts, and we specialize in insurance calls. You're in the paper call space, right? They're like, yeah, I do insurance calls too. I'm like, great, how long you been in the industry? They're like, oh, I've been doing it for the last couple of years. Cool, how long you been doing insurance? Oh, same thing the whole time, man. I'm like, that's awesome, I really like insurance calls. Have you seen anything interesting in the industry happen lately? Oh yeah, you know, with some changes in the whatever. Oh, cool, man, that's awesome. Were you at Affiliate Summit? Yeah, it was great, had a lot of, fun at the call party, whatever. Like, good, awesome, all right? And then ask them if they can help you with your needs. It's really that simple. This is not, this is not a complicated process because anyone that you're gonna cold call from a Facebook group for paper call that publicly says that they're involved in paper call probably wants to talk to you about paper call. If you can't make business happen in this way, it's you, it's not them because it's not that hard to do. And a lot of people who complain that they can't get into this space, well, they're violating all the rules I told you before with their fake Facebook profile and all the nonsense on it. Don't communicate clearly and type like a 14-year-old girl who's angry texting, okay? And so you need to be professional. Here are some very simple replies or posts from people who are professional in this space, all right? I know all these people, I've talked to them personally. They're all cool people, but they all do it the same way because there's one way that works, okay? There's not a million ways, there's one, all right? If you have tax debt calls, drop me a private message. If you know your backend CPA, even better. What's he saying? He's saying if you got tax debt calls, call me. And if you actually know how the hell this business works, I definitely wanna talk to you. If you're not an idiot, hit me up, okay? And it doesn't matter what time of day, Okay, most of these people will reply whenever, all right? Especially the ones here. If you hit Robert up at 2 p.m. on a, or 2 a.m. on a Saturday, and you're like, I got text calls, tax calls, bro. He's probably gonna be like, great. And he's gonna reply, okay? That's why I love this industry. Most people in this industry, if you communicate well, will reply to you seven days a week, 365 days a year, because they're all hyper-connected. If you don't get a reply, they saw it, they just don't wanna to reply to you, okay? So same thing with Brian here. Looking for high quality calls and home services for SoCal, roofing, HVAC, solar windows, installation jobs within 90 miles of downtown Los Angeles, great opportunity, contact me to discuss, okay? Same thing with Nick, looking for a national credit card debt offer, $45 plus payout, average talk time on my calls, it's 20 plus minutes. It's that simple. My calls are quality, I need to be paid well for them. Hit me up, I'm a real human being, okay? I communicate to the community with my real name and who I am, and so you know you can at least trust me enough that I don't wanna ruin my public reputation. And that's it, that's how the whole business operates. Now Skype examples, it's the exact same thing, guys. Communicate clearly, use the same name across all verticals, all mediums, all communication channels. If your name's Adam Young on Facebook, it should be Adam Young on Skype, it should be Adam Young on LinkedIn. Your email should be adam.young or adam at callexperts.com or whatever, okay? And you just need consistency. What people are looking for is professionalism, consistency, and accountability because you interact with the community. And all you have to do is those things and you can build a really successful, profitable business in this industry. So Skype, same thing, looking to buy one to 500 calls a day, airline travel, flight booking, addiction rehab, debt settlement, satellite TV, cable, internet. Please private message me for more details. That's it, you wanna work in this space? This guy's looking for more partners. Need direct TV calls, $20 for 60 seconds nationwide, PM me. What he's saying is he wants to buy direct TV calls. He's willing to pay $20 a piece with a minimum duration of 60 seconds nationwide coverage. That's all you need to know, all right? Buying flight booking calls, $10 for 50 seconds major airlines only. Nice and simple. Looking for addiction, TV, internet, vehicle donation, timeshare time cancellation. If anyone has traffic or is interested, please hit me up.
Nice and friendly, super professional. I need direct TV calls. Uh, this is the same example. I used it twice. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm looking for addiction, TV, internet, vehicle donation. This one's twice, too. All right, so I'm going to kill my editor, but you guys get the point. All right? We always need more buyers to diversify call inventory. We filter by methods, in, which include search marketing, social media, fully qualified transfers, voice drops, emails, SMS, and offline. Paper call verticals that we're currently in. Financial services, home services, insurance, travel, legal, telecommunications, and more. So what they're saying is they take all sorts of traffic sources across all sorts of industries and to hit them up if you want to do business. And so, again, just to recap, the most important thing from this lesson is conduct yourself with professionalism, okay? Make sure all your ducks are in a row, that all your communication is clear, concise, and professional. Use your real name, use your real contact information, and people will accept you into the community and they will do business with you.